Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Ryan Elmer with Allen Steel, and today we're going to heat treat a Sand My Kitchen knife. So, we have our Sand My Kitchen knife in the forge right now, soaking. It's all roughed in. Here it is. We're going with an 8 inch kitchen knife hidden tang, and right now we're going to do our normalizing cycle. So, basically, what that means is we're going to take all these little molecules and stop them at a tight grain structure. So, right now, this is the first normalizing cycle. You take it, you heat it to critical temperature, take it out of the heat, and slowly let it cool down in ambient air. What this does, all the molecules are shaking and moving, and they slow down. And when they slow down, they're in a tight pattern. So I like to do this at least three times because it helps keep that grain structure really tight, which helps minimize microfracturing and any chance it can crack, warp, or break in the quench. As it cools down, it's going to go from a bright orange to a red to a black. And when it's black, that's our first normalizing cycle, and that's when we're going to put it back into heat and let it get back up to critical temperature and do it again. A lot of folks I've seen wave it back and forth. Uh, the only thing you want to be careful with when you're cooling it down is to hold it so the cutting edge and the spine are perpendicular to the ground. Because if it's parallel to the ground, if the knife is thin enough, it'll actually bend under its own weight and you can get a warp in it. So while you're normalizing, keep it perpendicular in the direction you do not want it to bend and it'll help reduce that. Because when it's in that critical orange temperature, it's, it's plastic state and it'll move, move and bend and under its own weight in the tongs, because this is a fulcrum point where it's locked in, it can bend at the tang or bend under its own weight along the spot. Right now we're pretty straight, look right down the point. Not bad. If it's got a slight warp to it, which as it's cooling, it does have a little bit of a warp, which is perfectly okay, because we can straighten that out during our normalizing cycles and right before we quench. And right now, I have the oil heating up, and we'll explain that in a moment. So now that we have our knife soaking, I have our quenching oil warming up, because you want to preheat your oil, because that way it creates the same consistency and the viscosity of the oil. Because if it's thick and thin in different spots, it'll cool the blade down at different rates and you can get hard spots or soft spots and you won't have necessarily a consistent hardening throughout the whole blade. So I have it heating up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's roughly 70 to 80 Celsius. Here's our oil. While the blade is going through its next heat cycle, this will be normalized number two. Then we'll start to address any issues in the spine or the face. I have my heat warming up. I'm using canola oil. It's worked pretty well for me so far. I have my gauge. I'm looking to get 150 degrees, and it's just on an LPG cooker. I like to heat the oil slowly, that way it's a nice, consistent, gentle rise to temperature. That way it helps minimize any potential issues and it helps the heating be consistent. Um, so once it reaches about 120 degrees, I'll shut it off because it's going to continue to warm up because it's, it's just like when you set a steak after you cook it on the counter, it still it cooks. So I like to let it rest to it, so it maintains around 150 degrees. And that'll stay there for a couple hours. So once it's up to that temperature, I can shut it down. But our knife is almost next, ready for its next normalizing cycle. And this is where we'll address any uh, bending and warp. And we're going to use a uh, two by four, or like a wooden mallet. Now something to keep in mind while you're normalizing. You want to make sure that the core of the knife stays up to temperature. And by finding that temperature, you pick the knife up inside the forge, like so. And when you move the blade, if there's a shadow on the bottom of your forge, that means the temperature is of the core is not up to not up to critical yet. So what we like to do, what I like to do, I like to grab on the blade, pull it out just enough just so I can see if there's a shadow, and there is one. So I flip the blade and lay it back on the other side. That way it heats evenly through. And that way I don't have a softer core than the outside. That helps minimize cracking and warping. We're almost ready for our second normalizing cycle. This is where we'll address any warping or bending issues that we have so far to help minimize bending and warping in the quench. 
Okay, now that we have our nice puppy critical, it's a nice orange color. I'm going to give it a couple of run throughs under the, under the, I'm going to get a couple run throughs underneath the jet. And as you can see, you can see there's some black dots for them, so I'm going to scrape them off. That scale developing on the outside of the blade. Now what happens if you don't scrape that off, it'll leave dimples as you work the metal on your handle. Now I'm going to take my wooden bat. This is soft enough to not damage the face, but it's able to move the metal. Good enough for me. There's a little bit of rippling in it, but I can take care of that with a grinder. So now I'm going to stick it back in the forge and let it heat up again. And when you see a shadow while checking your forge, it'll be darker than the base of it. That, when you pick the blade up, that's the shape you're going to see and about the color difference if it's not up to critical in the center. Now we are ready for our third and final round of thermocycling, which is also known as normalizing. Pull my pull the knife out, there's still a little shadow, so I'm going to guide it underneath the jet a little bit, just to kind of help distribute that heat on either side. I'm going to hold the blade so it's perpendicular with the ground, that way it doesn't bend under its own weight. Because I don't want any warps left or right. I'd rather have a warp perpendicularly up and down because it's easier to correct on the grinder and when we're sharpening. So we're gonna sit here and wait. This is the boring part. You can see behind me there's a fire brick on top of my vise. That's a little preliminary caution. See what that's doing is that's preheating my vise because the vise is gonna be a really big heat sink, just like the anvil when you first start working on it. It pulls the heat out of what you're working on. So now that this is done normalizing, it's turned to a nice black color. We're gonna pop it back in, get it to critical, and then we can do our quench. The vise is a preliminary caution. Just in case there is a warp, I can put it in the vise and tighten it down on the spine to help mitigate some of that warp. And as it's slowly cooling down before it becomes hard, this will allow me to make up for a warp and help correct it. The fire brick on there is preheating the vise so that way it doesn't pull the heat up too quick and cool the spine too fast because I would rather have the spine be a little softer than the edge. And, we, and now that our oil is up to temperature, we've shut that off. And once this is at critical, we'll go ahead and quench. Now that our blade is up to critical, we're getting ready to quench. So what I'm going to do, I'll put the lid on the oil uh, quench tank. The lid. That off so we won't step on it. And this time it's really important to make sure you have safety glasses because that oil and bubble, you don't want that stuff in your eyeballs. That's not very good. We are at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect. I'm going to give it a couple stirs just to help make sure that the viscosity is about the same. You can tell it'll you'll feel resistance in certain spots. Like in the center, it's a little bit easier. There's a little less resistance, and it's easier to mold the thermometer. And that's because that's where the heat concentration is. It's right in the middle. So I'm stirring this a little bit. It gets some flow, help with viscosity. It all feels really good though. So now what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the blade out, and I'm going to go as fast as I can safely into the oil, and I'll explain what I'm doing as we go. Grab our steel. I'm going to pick it up and check for a shadow. Looking really good. I'm going to give it a couple runs under the jet. Here we go. And now that it's in the oil, I'm slowly agitating it back and forth with the cutting edge of the spine, but not going against the edge. Because what that's going to do, it's going to have weight resistance, and that's going to cause it to warp. But if you go with the cutting edge, it'll keep it from warping. Now you want to hold this, unlike Fortune Fire, where they pull it out and they have a little fireball, 
you want to hold this in the oil for your quenching until you stop seeing bubbles because that means it's up to, it's cooled down evenly throughout and you also have a lot less risk of flashback be careful not to bump it off the bottom of the tank because that can contribute to warping pull out slowly so you avoid splatter Boy, that is pretty darn straight. Not bad. Now, because I didn't have time to adjust the camera in between, I went ahead and set up my knife inside the vise. But I gripped the warm arm, this has been pre-warmed, and I gripped on the spine towards the tank, because I would rather have this junction be softer to support any stress and I keep the cutting edge hovering. Now, you don't want to lay this down flat on something because if it sucks the heat, it'll cause that to warp like a banana, and we don't want that, which is why I don't cool them down on my anvil. And on Fortune Fire, you see people, they go right to testing the file. Well, it's not a hard knife yet. So because it's, it's still in the hardening process, so I like to let it cool down to where I can touch it. The other thing you have to keep in mind is there's also scale on the outside. And if you have your file and it bites in, you might be biting scale. You might have to go in a 16th or a 32nd of an inch to get through that scale to that hard material on the inside. So while we let this guy cool down, we'll do some other prep work and we'll check to see how hard it is. Okay, so now that our knife is cool off, to be able to hold on to it. It's still fairly warm, but here she is. Came out nice and straight. I'm happy with that. Looks pretty darn good. So like on Fortune Fire, they pull it right out of the oil and they try testing it and it won't, and it's not hard. It's because they didn't give the steel time enough to harden up. So what we're gonna do, you see all these flakes right here? That's dried oil and there's scale, dried oil and scale all over this blade. So a lot of the times, when you file test, you have to get through that scale first before you get to the hard metal, but sounds pretty darn hard to me. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our wire brush and clean it up, and we're gonna take a rag and wipe off our extra oil. And sometimes in the quench that I forgot to mention earlier, you'll if, the, if you get a visit from the Ting Fairy, you'll hear a distinctive almost like that noise, and you'll feel it actually in your tongs. For practice, to kind of feel what it might be, take some hot steel and put it in water. You'll feel it vibrate through your tongs, and that helps you know that there's a significant crack in there. Sometimes you have no idea until you start grinding. So now that we wiped off all of our extra oil, we're gonna take our wire brush and clean up the surface a little bit. See if we can't get some of that scale off. And this knife is a San Mai. It is 15N20 for a jacket and a 1084 high carbon steel core. I went with a high carbon San Mai just because that way if the jacket steel is near the edge by the time I'm done grinding, I can still have something that holds a good edge. And where like mild steel won't harden. So now, take our big old flat file and we're gonna do a little test to see how hard she is. See how it's kind of biting still? That's because I have to work through that scale. Over here, where there's less scale, you're listening for that zinc sound and where it doesn't want to bite. I've had knives before where I've tried to do a file test, hear that? That right there, that noise. It's, I have to really push. And you're seeing that silver there because I'm cutting off the scale and the cooked on oil. But you hear that distinctive vibration. That means it's hard. And I'll show you an example with some mild steel. I have a piece of mild steel here that's not hard. And we're gonna show you the, the difference in the sound and you'll see the bite. 
See, that is just chewing. Chewing a groove. And I'm not even pushing. That's just riding down. Hear that sound? And now this is the sound. Almost sounds like a zipper. That's hard. Almost makes no sound and it really bites into it. And you can see down in here how it left a little corner from the steel just hugging hogged away. So that sounds pretty hard to me. We're gonna do a little rough shaping to clean it up and then we're gonna throw it in the temper. But that is how we harden a knife. I wanna thank you guys for watching my video and joining me in my awesome hobby and adventure. If you guys want, have any questions or tips or tricks, please feel free to throw them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them, I'd love to chat with you guys. And uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button so you don't miss my shorts. I got a bunch of them coming out. And I'm going to be putting out more content as I can. And stay tuned for how this guy is going to look when we etch it. I can't wait. It's going to be really cool. I got some, uh, some ferrocloid acid that I'm going to etch it in. It's called Gator Piss. And it's been phenomenal so far. This will be my second, uh, second etching with it. And I'm really excited. Take care, guys. Thanks. Bye.